How are you? Oh, what a rainy day. Well, miserable grey day today anyway. It's uh, had a good fun yesterday. I had a sort of day off really. I had to go and pick up uh, a vehicle and bring it back to Kent from Essex, which was helped by the fact that Essex was put into tier three. So there's no uh, problem going from tier three to tier three. Whereas before I would have been going from tier three to tier three, two and then back to three. So anyway, not that anyone checks this. I mean, let's, let's just be clear that uh, this is not, you know, we don't have machine gun posts on the roundabouts and stuff like that. People are just driving around, you know, and nobody's, uh, the police are, to be honest with you, they're, they're not really at all interested in the job of uh, making sure that uh, people are, are not going where they shouldn't go. Let me put my window down and uh, use my manual wing mirror retractor. There we go, because we're on a country road and you never know what's going to be around the corner. You think it'll be, you'd be worried about hitting horses or tractors or combine harvesters, but you know it's white van man is the problem. Anyway, I hope you're well. It's another another day in paradise. I'm on my way to work. It's Friday, so I'm only working Friday morning. <clears throat> I've got someone coming in for a winding trays, which we make in house. And uh, uh, and probably emergencies all morning, you know. I think we've got one denture fit or something. Anyway, uh, you know, it's the old problem of uh, wanting to get everything finished and everybody out of pain before Christmas. And uh, people have been in pain for a long time, possibly six months or so all decide around about the 16th, 17th of December that they might you know, want to get something done about it. So we do have a late rush of uh, people with toothache. But that's not what I wanted to really talk about today. Um, <clears throat> there was a parliamentary uh, question yesterday about the NHS contract. And the um, just to give you a very brief summary of what's happened this year with NHS dentists, so far as I know, I mean... I don't work in the NHS, so, but I do follow it and did, did follow it obviously for a long time. And uh, the situation was that uh, all, all the surgeries were told by the Chief Dental Officer that they needed to shut on around right about March 23rd. And uh, I can't tell you what time. And uh, she didn't have the authority to shut the private dental surgeries, funnily enough, and it, that was only found out later. But around about July then, uh, we were told that if we had the, the correct PPE and we followed all the advice, then we could reopen. But the NHS uh, dentist said that they wouldn't be able to work at full capacity. Um, and, and what they're doing is that they're measuring themselves, the yardstick is their contract value that their contract states they have to carry out a number of courses of treatment if you like units of dental activity but basically courses of treatment containing as you know as defined by what they contain and uh, they said you know given that you've told us that we've got to spend a lot of time cleaning and sterilizing in between patients so-called fallow time that um, we can't fulfill the contract so the government said all right then you know negotiating with the British Dental Association said well what can you do and the BDA said well in this year and, and the year being 1st of April 2020 to 1st of April 2021 uh, in other words almost precisely like the week after they, they stopped everyone working they said well basically because you stopped us working in this contract year pretty much up to now um, and what with all the uh, problems, then we're probably, let's say 20% of the contract uh, workload might be completed. But of course they still wanted 100% of the contract pay. 
So uh, since about March, they've been on 100% pay for about 20% workload, you see? Now, the only people that don't like that are the patients. BDA likes it, BDA members like it. Department of Health really has got a lot on its, on its, on its mind at the moment, so the dentistry as usual is right at the bottom of their list of things to get around to doing. So, but the problem is the Treasury's not gonna like that, is it? And they were lucky in a way that the financial year started at about the same time as COVID did, because um, it means that they've got like a full 12 months to decide what to do. Now, the problem is that, um, all right, it looks like you're coming out, whether I've got any choice or not. I don't know what it is about these people. There's a certain type of person that moves into a house, an expensive house, not necessarily an old house, and sometimes like quite a new build, with a load of builder's vans and stuff, lives there for about a year, they've all got flash cars, and then they move out again. It's a weird thing, it's like fireworks shops. Never understood it, or golf, or cricket. I don't know what, I mean, and the stamp duty on buying and selling houses at that rate must be crippling. I honestly just don't understand it. Anyway, and they're always so inconsiderate, that's the trouble, you know, they're always having a go at you about this or that, or if they can't get their big car through here, or this, pulling out in front of people, and they just, uh, anyway, I'm well off topic. So, The Treasury, round about now, we're in December, and it's starting to think, well, what's gonna happen from the 1st of April, you see, in the in the tax, in the year, uh, NHS financial year, 1st of April, 2021-22. And there's no way it's gonna allow the dentist to carry on doing 20% of the workload for 100% of the money. So what they've done is they've decided that they needed to ratchet things up a bit. And they've done this with the teachers. The, the teachers were the first to shut down even though they were told to stay open for emergency workers, but they decided that they'd rather be at home. So they proceeded to try and divest themselves of all these pesky children as fast as possible. And the government has now turned round and put its foot down and said, no, you're on your teachers, you're on full pay, the school should be open. So uh, a few uh, authorities like Greenwich have tried to use the local authority to shut the schools, but the government has threatened to take Greenwich to court and Greenwich back down straight away. So so now what's happening is there all the schools have invented problems with the boilers and stuff like that and said that the kids can't go to school. Uh, and so, uh, you know, but coming up to Christmas, but I think from January they'll they'll have to get their fingers out and actually, you know, do, do some teaching, even if it's only half the kids in the class and half the kids at home over Zoom. Um, which is stupid because I think all they're going to demonstrate is that kids uh, tend to grow up and get an education whether or not they're at school or not. But where was I? Oh yes, to the Treasury. So the Treasury's uh, come up with a plan and the plan is that from the 1st of January all dentists should commit to 42% of uh, their workload for 100% of their pay. Uh, you would think that the British Dental Association would still be fairly happy with this. I mean, I would certainly be 42% of the workload, 100% of the pay. I'd be, I'd be smiling. I mean, I mean, bearing in mind that in private practice we don't have a yardstick. Okay, we just do the work that as much work as we can do, and that's the work we do. So, I mean, you could compare your figures to what you did last year or the year before, but in a year like COVID, it's. What, the comparisons are pretty meaningless, aren't they? So, so in the private, the private, the small private independent sector has actually done rather well because we are continuing to try and do as much work as we can because we don't have some benevolent, beneficent employer to pay us wages, you know, our contract value, while while saying uh, all you need to do is put a couple of receptionists on 
the phones and just uh, remotely prescribe um, antibiotics like Smarties. So, so uh, in the independent sector, you know, now we've reopened, we're actually doing okay. But um, the that's the carrot. The um, the stick is that. Hang on, junction of death. Have to pay attention. I say, don't want, to, don't want to die live on air. They've said if you don't do 36% of your workload, then we're going to, uh, we, you know, we're going to have something to say about it. Now I don't know whether it's 36% with effect from the 1st of January or, or, third, or by the time the 31st of March 2021 comes around. We expect you to have completed 36% of your annual contract value. Um, but because I'm only going from the parliamentary question yesterday, and it, that wasn't specific. But obviously, the BDA's uh, with a, with an eye to its members has decided to have a good old cry and scream and a wail about this. And the members are all crying and screaming and wailing. And to be honest with you, I'm embarrassed because they are. They're getting to be a bit like the teachers in the, you know, they've decided that dentistry without the patients is quite a good lark. So, and there's no reason why they should be working um, because they've got all the PPE now and everything. It's all generally available, you know, so it's not like there's a shortage of anything. It's not like there's a shortage of uh, disinfectant or, and these guys have all got sterilizers and stuff like that. The only problem is the, the fallow time. This idea that uh, certain uh, procedures in dentistry, mainly drilling and scaling with a sonic scaler, create a potentially infectious aerosol, which must be allowed to dissipate. And as far as I know, this is all theoretical. I mean, I don't know. It's in the, in the same way that when HIV AIDS was around in the 80s, um, there, there was, um, you know, there was a strong suspicion or a suggestion a suggestion I would say that it could be transferred through dentistry that you could catch it at the dentist from just having dentistry and of course it was later found out that that, that was not the case at all you know and that uh, someone had just invented this you know it was just mass hysteria it was just uh, the collective consciousness gone, gone bananas um, and in the same way I think that this infectious aerosol is is the collective consciousness gone bananas again? Uh, because everybody who can remember what a bananas thing it was is now retired, and we've got a new collect a new a new collection of bananas working in the Department of Health and, and in general practice. So that the aerosol unfortunately drives the coach and horses through two things. One is the clinical model of the NHS, which is sort of pilot, pilot, I sell it cheap. And the other one is the financial model of the NHS, which relies on a large throughput of patients uh, to achieve the uh, necessary course of treatment uh, and the necessary union incidental activity and therefore the contract, uh, fulfill the contract. So, it was, you know, without wishing to dwell on the past, I mean, the old system of uh, where dentists did a certain amount of work every year, and then uh, we, we were all racing against each other. And if you came, like in the first twenty percent, uh, in terms of productivity, you were rewarded. Um, and if you came in the bottom twenty percent of um, practitioners, then you you earned less than you should have done. Um, and that was called the rat race. And then they brought out this system of, uh, I mean, yeah, and if you're in the bottom 20%, you didn't really mind because to be honest with you, by the time you're in the bottom 20% of people in terms of how much NHS work you carried out, you were probably private anyway. So, you know, you had the private income to make that up. Um, but um, that was called the rat race. And then it was replaced with this contracting system where they contract for a certain amount of activity. And, um, and they were like, they were, you know, for years you've been complaining, you're all in competition with each other, and, and you called it the rat race, and now 
we've given you a system where you've got a clearly defined objective in terms of uh, activity and you know you don't have to race you don't have to be thinking every day can I do a bit more just to finish ahead you you can plan you know you can split the activity up into 12 monthly targets and just do so much a month but in fact the problem was that um, <laughs> it turned it from a race where everybody was racing on a level playing field in the same year against each other under the same conditions to to a race where the Department of Health set the finishing line and every year you know the finishing line was just moved a bit further away and uh, so and we're all racing like mad to get over the Department of Health finishing line now instead of just racing with each other to get over our own what we regard as reasonable finishing line uh, and so you know which is why the whole service has gone to hell in the handbasket and you can't get an NHS dentist anywhere because uh, most people or reasonable people I think have, um, have sort of given up the um, given up the race but anyway the point is that uh, the Public Health England uh, 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 stated clearly that um, this new 4236 rule is going to put um, a lot of people in uh, conflict with the, their, their contracts in other words they said that I think 64% of the dentists are, will fail uh, to achieve their contracts based on their current levels of activity but so what they're doing is they're really saying look you've got to step it up you've got to put, bit, put your foot on the gas you know so you're going you should be doing 70 okay you've been doing 15 miles an hour we want you to get up to at least 35 <laughs> so what are you going to do if you're the NHS you know you made a deal with the devil and so you have to dance But um, I always said the Treasury was going to be the problem because there's no way the Treasury is going to say next year, oh yeah, yeah, don't worry, we'll, we'll pay these guys full whack, you know, until such time as they deign to go back to work. So what's going to happen, you know? I mean, I think come April, I think there'll, there'll be a lot of uh, activity, you know, there'll be a lot of contracts will be reviewed and contracts will be withdrawn uh, but you never know with the NHS because you know they've got so few contractors anyway now uh, and no scope really to unless they do what they did with the orthodontists and what they did with the orthodontists was that they um, they were spending a lot on straightening the nation's teeth up and somebody at top level decided it was a poor waste of taxpayers money to straighten teeth up so they literally they banned dentists like me from doing orthodontics people who did uh, you know like a dozen cases a year the, the really easy cases the ones that could easily be handled in general practice so they stopped us doing those and then they raised the bar in terms of how wonky the teeth needed to be and then they um, said that, uh, you know, if you needed to have your teeth straightened up, it needed to be done by someone with a postgraduate qualification. So like someone with a, like a proper, what we call a specialist orthodontist. And so the waiting list uh, went up for them. And with the bar going up on how wonky your teeth needed to be to get them straightened on the NHS, um, basically most of them either retired or went private. And so in a stroke, or several strokes, they pretty much pushed orthodontics out of the National Health Service. And it's possible that they may do the same with, with uh, you know, I don't know, if not with general dentistry, but certainly something like crowns or bridges or chrome dentures or something, you know. Um, because they are, they've got a sort of a, they're shrinking the service down. Ken Weech, who was the uh, MP for Ipswich and parliamentary advisor to the General Dental Practitioners Association in the 80s and the 90s, said that um, it's like the farmer who decided to save money by feeding his horse a bit less every every day, which was a 
policy that worked extremely well until the horse died. And uh, I always remember that because that's really the story of the NHS dentistry in my in my career. You know, in my in my professional career, it was very healthy in eighty two when I qualified, and it's dead. <laughs> now I'm going to leave it dead. There are two practices in Kent, um, and they used to be over five hundred. And I know because I used to I typed them all in personally into a database and we used to write to them uh, when I was uh, BDA in charge of the BDA section um, so so I know I remember that figure because um, Faith my nurse and I used to we, we sat down and I did the typing and she, she read them all out so I've probably still got that database actually if I was to filter for BDA section I'd have a list of everybody who was in practice in 1985 <laughs> Anyone wants to buy that data, let me know. <laughs> Don't know what use it'll be. If you're listening in from GDPR, that was a joke, okay? Right. You have to say these things these days. Nobody's got a sense of humour anymore. Anyway, you're going to need to have a sense of humour in April if you're working on the NHS. And I don't know, opinion is divided about what all these NHS dentists are doing. Some people I talk to say that they're, they've got a couple of girls on reception and they're like the doctors, they're, they're sitting around doing nothing. Uh, or um, my personal gut feeling is that they're doing NHS, uh, private work. I think they're doing private work. Because, I mean, and technically they're not supposed to. And technically they're supposed to have signed an undertaking not to take advantage of the pressure on the NHS to improve their private percentage. But uh, <clears throat> technically they're not supposed to tell patients that in order to have a scale and polish, they need to go and see the hygienist and pay 50 quid. But that doesn't stop them. That doesn't stop them. You know, since the dental reference officer service was pretty well neutered when they closed down Eastbourne uh, the, the checks and balances and inspections and, and testing on the NHS has, has all but vanished and that was you know uh, that was deliberate because uh, what the Richmond House and the Department of Health was doing to the dental service at the time they didn't want an inspector to expose that you know they were quite happy for um, for dentists to um, make the compromises necessary to work in their new cut down system and they didn't want uh, dental reference officers annoyingly popping up <laughs> with reports saying that work was going undone or that work wasn't being done properly or that uh, uh, work that should have been done on the NHS was being done privately and so you know but and I have offered to run the service for them, but they, they very politely said no. So, so I'm very politely said, right, well, in that case, something about making your own bed and sleeping in it. Right. Anyway, so that's where we're at the moment. And nice to talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.